Sarah McNulty with NASA's Kennedy Space Center. We are standing here at the shuttle landing facility operated by Space Florida. And as many of you know, we've been conducting a series of supersonic test flights here over the last week. And here we have with us today the research pilots who are a part of that program, the Sonic Bat program. We have Wayne Ringelberg, whose call sign is Ringo, and Nils Larsen, whose call sign is Nils. Now, these guys are getting ready to fly right now. So they're actually about ready to start up the engines on their airplane. Um, that being said, we are going to try and fit as much content as, into this as we can before they do that. So make sure that you're leaving your questions in the comment sign below. We'll get to those in just a few minutes. We'll be answering those live on air. So guys, can you tell me a little bit about the Sonic Bat program? Um, what you're doing, what the Sonic Bat program is all about? Well, we're making boom. Sonic Boom. Uh, the big reason we're making those is we want to see how that sonic boom uh, transmits through the atmosphere and how it reaches the ground. So here we're looking a little more specifically because we want moist air. We have stuff for dry air, we need some moist air and turbulent moist air. We've got plenty of moist air here today. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so, um, so guys, tell me a little bit about why supersonic test flight is important to the future of aerospace and why we're doing it here in Florida. You want that one? No. Oh, so, uh, well, we'd like to bring the world closer together and a little closer together faster. So one of the things we'd like to do is be able to get to uh, places in half the time. In order to do that, we got to go supersonic. We've been driving around at 0.8 Mach for a long time. We'd like to get to more like 1.4 Mach. The problem is there's a boom. And when you go over land right now, the FAA says you can't do that. And why does the FAA say that you cannot do that? Well, long ago with the Concorde and other aircraft, uh, the sonic boom that was created was, you know, a lot of people really didn't like that. You know, a sonic boom is really thunder. You get a double boom with what happens. But um, we think there are ways that we can shape an airplane to make uh, the boom not such a crack, but more like distant rolling thunder. That's another project that is further off. This is just some of the preliminary work that we're doing to eventually get to that. Well, very cool, guys. Um, the F-18 behind us is one of two different aircraft, two F-18 aircraft that we're going to be flying here for the Sonic Bat project. Um, can you guys tell me a little bit about the F-18 aircraft? Sure. Why the, you're using it? Sure. The F-18 is a twin-engine supersonic fighter aircraft. Uh, we have three at Armstrong. We've got two of them here. You can see uh, two of our pilots getting ready to fly the, the two-seat version right now. It's capable of speeds up to Mach 2.0. We're not getting quite that fast for this uh, testing, but we are getting up to 1.35 Mach. Uh, and this is aircraft that's capable of doing that. We can get three booms uh, in a sortie. It does take a little extra fuel to fly that fast, so we can do three sonic booms. Uh, we fly both aircraft together, one after the other, and then we get six booms, and that's a sufficient amount of data for a particular data set they're trying to get. So um, I think we have a model of one of the aircraft that is going to Thanks. be made as a result of these tests here. What, what is this aircraft and what does it represent? Well, this is a, a model of a low boom flight demonstrator. I believe this is actually a model of the Quest design that is out there. Uh, you'll notice in this one that it's got a really long nose out there. The pilot sits about halfway back. Uh, you'll notice part of the way you get rid of some of that, that boom is that long nose to break up the shock. You also distribute the lift uh, differently across the aircraft. Uh, if you look at it, it looks a lot like a dart. Uh, so the idea on this is normally we have what we call an N wave that gives you that crack crack. Um, a lot like a firecracker when it goes off. You get that sharp uh, crack in the beginning. What we'd really like to do is kind of knock that down a little bit and make it more like a, a dull thump. Uh, and by having that nose way out there, that kind of helps out with that. Very cool. So um, you mentioned that the FAA will not allow you to do sonic booms over populated areas um, at too low of an altitude. So how are we dealing with it here in the local area? Sure, uh, so we we basically set up some airspace, special use airspace for us uh, with the FAA out over the water. 
where they do let you do sonic booms. And fortunately, we were able to get airspace that was close enough to the land to be able to be over the microphones that we have on the ground to collect the data. So uh, it's just coordination with them. And it's a very small region that we're allowed to do it in. And we are mindful of where we think the booms are going to be going that we don't really want them to go to. Okay. And um, what do you do in the event of an inclement weather situation? Like, uh, looks like we might be having gather here. Well, the big one is the uh, array we have on the ground. Uh, it takes about half an hour to bag up the microphones because we don't want to damage them. So we have people watching the weather constantly. And when it's time to get those things in, they send out the call, you know, bring those in. The airplanes, it's not too bad because there's several different fields that we can go to around here if we can't make it back here. We do have a motor glider that we're using as well for some of these tests. It's a little harder for that guy to get home and because uh, he's got to stay out of the weather. Uh, so today he's not flying just because uh, the weather looked a little dicey for him to fly today. So, uh, so that's one of the ways that we mitigate that is by not flying if it looks too bad. Well, an interesting aspect of that also is some of the data we're trying to get, the, the atmospheric conditions that we want, are either going to be right before the storms come through or right after. So we've got a lot of what is the moderate sort of turbulence data. We're trying to get that extreme stuff now. So we're going to be having the working in around these, these guys probably for the remainder of the project. Now you mentioned the glider. Um, I'm not sure if you guys on the camera can see the glider. Um, if we want to walk a little bit this way, we might be able to see it inside of the hangar. Um, guys, can you talk a little bit more about the glider, how it follows the jet, and how it measures the boom? So the, the, the motor glider, uh, the reason why we're using a glider is because it can cut the motor off and be quiet. So we have a very sensitive microphone on the wing. So we're coordinating different uh, waypoints and timing over the radio to make sure they're in the proper spot to collect the boom data. So we'll be up at 32,000 feet. They'll be down around 5,000 feet or so. When we're coming in for our run, they'll turn in for their run, cut the motor off, make sure that if the uh, microphone's recording. We'll hit the boom overhead. We'll wait for it to come on the ground, wait for them to get their sonic boom and then their reflected boom. And then we'll basically record all the parameters after that. So it's, its uniqueness is the fact that it can fly quiet, basically silently, so it can collect a pure, pure boom sound. Okay, um, thank you guys for giving us the rundown here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to Facebook to answer some questions that you're leaving in the comment section. Remember, if you leave a comment and you're watching this live right now, we're going to answer it for you. So um, the first question that we have is, are you only looking at reducing the boom or also ways to reduce drag? I think primarily we're looking at, at controlling the boom. Uh, obviously, we, we've gotten pretty good in aeronautics controlling drag, so we're, we're obviously balancing those two things. But I don't, I'm not aware of any project where we're trying to use the boom to help reduce the drag. Uh, right now, I think we're just working on trying to get it quiet enough that we can do it over, over the UF. Well, especially with the, the low boom demonstrator, its real purpose is to be able to go and set whatever that acceptable level of boom is. So we need to go uh, define what that is. Then there are other projects inside NASA where we look at trying to improve efficiencies supersonically with new inlet designs, new wing designs, and thing like, things like that. Those are going on simultaneously, but uh, they are actually slightly separate programs. We do work on those same programs, it's just that's not what this one's about. And I think um, that's actually a good um, vehicle into the next question that we're being asked from Facebook. Uh, next question is, have you done flights other than to collect information about sonic booms to make them quieter? I think they're talking specifically about test flights that co collect information. Uh, yeah, I fly the F-15 back in uh, um, California and frequently, like we have a project right now that has a wing shape on the bottom of the F-15 and we will drag that out to, say, Mach 2. It's almost like having an external wind, wing, uh, wind tunnel on the bottom of the airplane. Uh, you can collect a lot of data and have a, a pretty decent sized shape on the bottom. Uh, wind tunnels have trouble in that when you want to get air going really fast, usually you have to have a pretty small model, especially if you want sustained uh, Mach numbers. Uh, it's really nice with this because we can give you a nice long run in the real atmosphere. Okay, um, our next question is, how long before a low boom vehicle will be ready for testing? Um, 
It kind of depends on how quickly they fund it. Uh, we're guessing within about three to four years we should be flying the first flights of that vehicle. Uh, and then uh, that's where we would do the initial testing of the vehicle itself. The next thing we have to go define what its boom is and then we'll be going out and actually looking at community responses, going out and looking for the community to help us with the data to see if they heard the boom and what they thought of the boom. Did they even notice it? Uh, so uh, that's a different phase and it's roughly about a year each phase as we get into that and, and the last phase is probably a, a couple of different years because you're probably going to do it at a couple of different times. All right, guys, I think we are starting up the engines now. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up our paper. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and let's wish these guys good luck.